Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the One Nation of Gamers Summer Circuit Feature Tournament number four. This is the fourth and final feature tournament, which means after this weekend, we will have our seventh and eighth. The final players will be joining us at the Grand Finals at PAX. Once again, I'm TJ, joined by the mayor of Value Town himself, Trump. Trump, are you enjoying yourself so far? Are you enjoying these matches? Yeah, it's good. Good to look at them, see what my competition at PAX might mm -hmm. be. Yeah, and so far uh, we've seen some pretty nice matches. Uh, Chalky uh, from from one side, he three would his opponent Impact in the first round. Soundstorm had a little bit of a more grueling and close matchup against his opponent Privet, uh, going three two in that series. So uh, both these players sort of had different paths to get to this winner match, but sort of start over from scratch here. Chalky, his his lineup will have to be tested against a little bit different decks as Soundstorm is bringing that really interesting Paladin deck. Um, that we talked about earlier. What are your thoughts on that Paladin deck after seeing it in action in that last matchup, Trump? I'm really excited to see this matchup. Chalky clearly brought his three decks with a strong nod towards Patron Warrior. Uh, he's brought three decks which he believes will go at least 50% against Patron Warrior or have an advantage, I assume. And Silent Storm didn't bring Patron Warrior, so this is where we get to see the two philosophies clash. Silent Storm with his, all right, I'm not going to bring the number one thought of deck in order to try to abuse the fact that some people will aim their lineups against Patron versus Chalky, who is bringing the three kind of consistent strong decks. Let's see which uh, philosophy prevails here. Yeah, and Chalky um, told me that uh, he wants to thank his teammate Blackout for helping him with the uh, mid-range hunter list that he brought. Uh, Chalky has been a pretty big innovator with hybrid and face hunter. Um, but after talking it over with his teammate, he, he, they, I guess they s sort of settled on the really heavy mid-range, which is not very characteristic of what Chucky usually goes with. Mm, that's true. Like, of the decks I would expect to be characterized by Chucky, he's not brought the more aggressive Warlock, he's not brought the more aggressive Hunter, and he's playing a patron, which is kind of controlling. So, Chucky uh, showing his adaptability adaptability and just mastery of all the decks. Uh, interesting call by Silentstorm already. He made the guy the hero power over the shield and main bot. Makes sense uh, as a Baldwin player you really get in sync with just accepting to look ahead a turn and being like, okay, next turn I'm playing the mini bot and the hero power. Yeah, realize that he doesn't have a turn four play otherwise. Um, also, you can apply a Sort of a sneaky amount of pressure with the with the dudes in Paladin against Handlock. Um, normally, this matchup is pretty favored for Paladin. It depends on some certain circumstances. Also, though, uh, big thing is whether or not the Paladin is ranked double equality or just a single equality. That helps the matchup a lot for Paladin. Also, uh, cards like Elder Peacekeeper are just really strong in the matchup. So um, I would say that Paladin's favored, but maybe. We can get some more statistics from our yeah. good friend, Monk. For the longest time, I was thinking that this uh, matchup was favorite on the handlock side just because over the long-term game, uh, Talon doesn't have that much burst, and therefore they have a tough time filling up the board. If they ever fill out the board, you just hellfire, and the handlock has inevitability because they can just tap. But it turns out that the Paladin does have some pretty good tools, and they can actually put on a surprising amount of pressure. Like We actually see oh, wow. the Paladin has used his hero power twice in this game so far already, but yet the Handlock is already feeling the pressure. Uh, the so, guys just are able to deal so much pressure sometimes. Yeah, so it is a relatively small sample size, 16 games, but right now in competitive play, it's 50-50 for mid-range Paladin and Handlock. So it's a really close matchup based off of the statistics that we have, uh, which is is pretty interesting. I, I think the more controlly the Paladin gets, the better it is, because usually you have like wild power managers and double equalities, but uh, that's really cool that it's a super close matchup. It's, um, it's a really fun one to watch. Right, it's kind of interesting, actually, because Face Paladin has one of the best matchups against Handlock. So it's like the more control you get, the better the matchup. The more aggro you get, the better the matchup. And if you take the middle of the road, the half measure is kind of weak. Or not, not, not as strong, I should say. Yeah, you have to sort of go full-on aggression or full-on for the late game. And 
in the very early stages of Hearthstone tournaments, back in like the ESGN Fight Night days, we saw a lot of Handlock versus Control Paladin. And uh, Control Paladin usually came out on top in those matchups back then. Handlock hasn't changed too much. Paladin has changed a whole heck of a lot. That's very true. Uh, this Paladin, thanks to the newish cards of uh, Shield and Minibot, has managed to deal quite a lot of pressure and forced Shockey to use a Area of Effect card uh, much earlier than he would have liked. I uh, usually want to save that for the Quartermasters. I'm not sure whether or not... Well, like you said, Chalky's been on the sta uh, stage with you casting, so you might be aware of Sandstorm's aversion to Quartermasters, yes? Yeah. And uh, we can see Sandstorm's not really reluctant to push in because he knows he does have Equality Consecrate in his hand. Um, which Chucky realizes is a big threat. So instead of like building up a wall there with Molten Giants, instead he decides to be proactive with the threat removal. Uh, but now Siphon has gone, and all of a sudden there's a Tyrion on the board. That's pretty scary. Yep, that Tyrion is going to kind of be the the big push. Uh, Chucky right now, he does have the Sun Fury, so if he taps, he's going to be able to play both and the Sun Fury, but... Uh, Silent Storm just happens to have exactly the counter with the equality and the consecration. In fact, uh, it's not quite going to be Silent Storm immediately wins if Chucky does the obvious Molten Molten Sun Fury play, but it looks like it'll be a near luck. Yeah. It's a tough turn because you know in the back of your mind if he has a quality, you'll probably lose, but you don't really have a choice because the threat of the Tyrion is just too much, so... Um, he might find a middle ground and play just one Molten, but I feel like if he was going to do that, he would have just not tapped and played the really safe route, kept himself at 14. So here we go. He's going to go for it. Yep, definitely the correct play to make. Um, and this is what gives Paladin the edge. Like sometimes, as Paladin, it feels like you have to have like two things uh, when you try to win this matchup. One, you have to put on enough early pressure such that the handlock is a little panicked and makes some non-optimal plays. Uh, two, you have to have the finisher at the end. And in this case, Sunstorm had both. Uh, he's even going to be able to hold on to his consecration thanks to those. Um, oh, wow, he found lethal. Win. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, it depended on how the boom bots landed, uh, but he did have multiple opportunities to find lethal with that and doesn't even need the Consecration, because there's only three creatures on the board, so he realized that if he throws in both of his boom bots, as long as both of them like don't go face for less than three, less than four, so like three, then uh, then he would have won. So I guess it didn't really matter at all. He had guaranteed lethal. Yeah, um, a matchup like well that, when you see it, just makes you think, oh, well, Paladin versus Anlock. Man, Paladin sure is favored. But it usually doesn't go as rosy as that. Uh, having played both sides of the matchup a lot. Okay, whoa, Sunstorm has the oh, ultimate oh. ramp hand. Wow. All he needs is, like, an Ancient of Lore, and all of a sudden he's in a great spot. Uh, one of the weaknesses to, like, keeping both wild growths with, like, an Innervate Emperor is that Emperor's not really hitting many targets. It's hard to remove because it comes out so early, but you don't really have many cards that do things. Uh, That's right. I think uh, Sunstorm... Might want to consider tossing a wild growth. So he goes turn two wild growth and then innervate Thorazan. Is he? Did he keep nope. it all? Four keep. Wow. Or maybe he mulliganed a card and was. Uh... Well, no. Okay. Nope. He kept it all, I guess. Four keep. Wow, it's crazy. Uh, but he does find a Paladin Shredder, which is actually really good because Paladin Shredder fights for board early on, um, really nicely, and. This is a bit awkward, though. No, that next makes turn. sense, because the next turn you also play Wild Growth, and then you uh, go Thorisand without the Innervate. But then the question is, like, okay, you discounted your Innervate, and meh. Yeah. I feel like he could have afforded to, um, like, play a creature out with Innervate and forego the second Wild Growth. 
Uh, well, if, if you're going to keep two wild growths in your hand, then your plan is going to be two wild growths, wild growths. So, yeah, makes a lot of sense. And nice. uh, with this, you can in fact go with the shredder next, and then into the Thorasan. You're not uh, discounting many things, but all right. All right, here we you go. You are going really fast. So, Silent Storm's game plan is to draw Ancient of Lore. That's a solid game plan, but a game plan that's not that reliable. If he doesn't draw Savage Roar, he's going to have a hard time to, to deal with this. Now, uh, Druid is one of those classes where I feel like playing Frothing Berserker, like on turn three, like on curve, is really strong. Reason being is because there are some matchups where patrons are your primary win condition, there's some matchups where Frothing Berserker are your primary win condition. Of course, they can both be win conditions regardless, but in this matchup, I feel like the patrons uh, are enough to win you the game because Druids have a, such a tough time dealing with a lot of uh, a lot of patrons that you can afford to use the Frothing Berserkers early on to try and apply pressure um, and then use the Grim Patrons as a sort of a checkmate tool once you know that the removal's gone. Yeah, Chalky's uh, taking this kind of as one of the rarer uh, win conditions for Patron Warrior, where you simply play the efficient Frothing and the Frothing, and you try to win with early game minions. I think Druid is one of the classes which you can get away with doing this the most on. Mm. Um, Collector Solid does Storm is going to have a tough time. Yeah. And, I mean, this sort of ruins his turn. Drawing a second innervate doesn't do anything. <laughs> it's actually a pretty mm. bad draw at this stage. I thought that Savage Roar might have been an interesting play there. You go uh, you go Wrath, and then you Savage Roar, and then you manage to kill both. Mm -hmm. But Silent Storm has instead opted to cycle, and he does find a rather good card. And this Wild Growth, Wild Growth Thorson plan is uh, not paying off as much since he drew the other Innervate. Yeah. Not at all. Uh, he can take solace in the fact that both frothings are out of the way. So later on in the game, that's that much stuff. He does not have to worry about playing around. He basically can think in his head, okay, as long as I play around Grim Patron stuff for the next of the game, for the rest of the game, I'm good. Which Grim Patrons, you can more easily calculate the maximum amount of damage. Yep. Ooh, big draw by Chalky there. He really needed to get another card to keep the card draw engine going. Um, but here it's going to be more important to just deal with that. I wonder if he's going to burn a Whirlwind. No. Can you? Nah, you can't. So you're going to let the uh, Emperor Thorson go twice. Which is scary. But <laughs> double Innervate is probably one of the worst hands that you can get. Pages don't run low with them, so doesn't not going to really matter for the rest of the game. But reducing combo twice is going to allow for some crazy things in the late game. That's right. Um, Sunstorm has kind of got a mix of really good fortune in the sense that he has all the ramp, uh, had all the ramp early, and then some bad fortune in the sense that he wasn't able to spin the innervates, and then some good fortune in that Thorasan is surviving twice and top decking the Ancient of War. Uh, kind of balances out to be rather interesting. In fact, it looks like Sonstor might get a third discount from Emperor Thorasan. If he didn't have the two Innervate hand, he would surely be very far ahead. Man, at this stage, it looks like Chalky just has to try and... Ooh, okay. I was thinking maybe he needs to try and draw more, but he'd rather have the discount, so uh, next turn he can start maybe propagating patrons or... Uh, be able to draw for cheaper. My gosh, is that lethal? <laughs> Let's see. 14, 18, 28. Oh, I think that's lethal. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah, it is. And he's literally going to empty... He could just empty his hand. Uh, he could double innervate and <laughs> savage or hero power. He needed exactly those eight cards to win on turn nine. <laughs> no, not really, but... That's uh, that's a really scary win. And the double wild growth, it didn't look like it was going to pay off because he got double innervate, but reducing the combo twice from Emperor allowed him to just make an absurd turn. Wow. Wow. 
things that Emperor Thorsan can do. And looks like Soundstorm is going to take a 2-0 to zero lead. So uh, Chucky's he 3 0 his first series. He had to be feeling pretty confident, but now he's down to a situation where he has to beat Handlock three times in a row. He does have a couple decks that are okay, like Midrange Hunter. Yeah, that's good against Handlock. Uh, yeah, Handlock. Then he has Handlock, which is a 50-50, but then he has Patron, so that one's going to be rough. Yep, this will be a tough one. Looks like uh, Jockey's going to just go with the toughest matchup first, get it out of the way. You're going to have to spend all three. There's no point in winning more. Uh, so 3 0, 3 2, it's all the same. So we'll see if we can uh, take out the biggest obstacle first. Jockey has been on the receiving end of um, matches that take a very long time. We casted for nine hours straight yesterday because almost every series went to a five-game set. So he realizes that uh, he's going to throw his worst matchup out there first because he knows, like you said, he has to win with it anyway to maybe cut down on some of the time of the matchup. Oh, this is really interesting. We have a coin watcher's school of thought. Uh, Raynad's in a big support of this, and I'm actually strongly against this. Uh, Soundstorm seems to do it actually a lot. Um... Soundstorm, he does weird things with Handlock. A lot of times he does like very inefficient plays where with Watchers and Mortal Coils and taps early on. Like he floats mana where like other players would not float mana. He coin taps. Oh, like I'd say if I had the statistic, it'd probably be close to 50% of his Handlock games where he has the coin. It's really interesting. He's a, he's a very interesting player. Yeah, I... It, it might be a closer, like, eh, okay, I can see it happening in the case where he didn't already have the Twilight Drake and the Mountain Giant, but especially with all this stuff, boy, I would never do a play like that. But hey, uh, it is very refreshing to see another line of play. And ultimately, it probably isn't much of a difference. Yep. Chucky managed to, dr managed to draw... A decent amount early on. I, I feel like he's in a little bit better position than the handlock players that we saw early on in the day. He just needs some removal. And he actually... Ooh. Slam. Yeah, it's going to be a nice, efficient way to deal with those minions. Yeah. Uh, very good to get that triple draw off early. One of the key things of Patient Warrior to be able to use the Acolyte, draw the three. And one of the things about Handlock is you're always trying to use the Owl to be able to uh, stop that from happening. Mm -hmm. And he knows that this game is not going to go late enough for Jaraxxus to be anything. And with Patron, a lot of times you don't want to Harrison Jaraxxus because by that time you'll probably be fatiguing out. So. Um, wow, this Emperor actually hits some pretty big dings. The only thing he's missing is like a Warsong Commander, and he's actually looking at a lot of damage next turn. Yep, that's really good. Um, furthermore, it helps to get that Mountain Giant down uh, with a slam and just a Whirlwind effect. It's going to kill it, and very good to draw that Acolyte of Pain with it, since you were playing to Whirlwind this turn as well. Uh, just to finish out the dream, we're going to want to get a and execute for Emperor Thorastan. If that Emperor Thorastan goes off twice, Jockey's in a lot of trouble. Yes. And he will not have another draw after that, but, well, he will, but he won't be able to pick up and execute and he'll be able to use it. There's Warsong Commander. With eight mana next turn, he could fit Warsong Commander, Frothing Berserker, Unstable Ghoul, Double Unstable Ghoul, and Whirlwind. Five, six, seven, eight, yeah. That's three Whirlwind effects. Wow. Yeah, without a taunt, uh, this could be really close to lethal. In fact, it would probably be lethal if no taunt were played. Um, but, uh-oh, sounds are masked over the Dr. Boom. Only for a split second, though. Oh, man, I'm not sure if the Sludge Vulture is enough. did clear, and getting that discount is a really big deal. 
Um, if okay, oh boy. So if he goes a uh, war song, frothing ghoul, three, five, six, eight, whirlwind. Uh, that's one, two, three, four, five minions on his side, four minions on Sandstorm's side. So nine total minions, so each whirlwind effect roughly, uh, it adds nine. Uh, so that's 27 for the uh, Frothing Berserker using very rough paper napkin math. But the problem is getting through the Sludge Belcher. He can do it. Um, if he works on Commander Frothing, um, he would have to throw the first Unstable Ghoul into the Sludge Belcher then execute it, then throw the Acolyte of Pain into the Slime, then Whirlwind, or Whirlwind first, then throw the Acolyte of Pain into the Slime, and then he would be able to hit face with Frothing. It sounds like that misses a Whirlwind effect, though, because you're using the Execute instead of the Ghoul, in which case uh, you're only Whirlwinding for 14-ish damage. Wow, that's... Yeah. <laughs> Silent Storm is like, what did you just do, Chucky? You just played a five-mana patron. So this is pretty much the scariest thing in the world, because... Uh, Silent Storm has probably if if my opponent plays a five mana patron, I'm like, oh man, I'm about to die. Yeah. <laughs> Just taunt everything. <laughs> Defender of Argus, Sunfury Protector. At the same time, though, you don't want to put yourself into a situation where you have to play around worst case scenario to an extent. Um. And I think right. that my interesting thing is if you worst case scenario and play like two of the two attack minions of the Sun Fury and the Argus, you might actually make the situation worse. Okay, the Lotha pretty much locks in this turn as not going to go off. But interestingly enough, Chalky's uh, whirlwind effects, two of them aren't spells. Uh, but can't get through all these taunt walls yet. Hmm. If Chalky can uh, survive until next turn, he's got the War Song Commander, Frothing, uh, Patron, Unstable, and Whirlwind, which is probably as good as it's going to get. Uh, looks like he will survive. Yeah, he can Don't axe think off that's the Emperor. going to be though. enough, though? He can execute the Ancient. Uh, execute wouldn't be able to be played because it takes, let's see, 3, 7, 9. It, if he wants to play the ghoul, it doesn't have the one mana. So I guess it's either execute or ghoul. I don't think without the uh, second whirlwind effect, he has enough. I was thinking he was going to execute something this turn for six mana. Because all he did was armor up oh. and floated five. Right. Um, but he decides not to. So is he going to be able to have it next turn? Uh, well, Silent Storm. He, he hit the Sludge Belcher in order to hit it again, and that's going to allow Grim Patron to split off of the uh, ooze, the slime. Um, it's one of those situations where you're going to lose the next turn, so you just do it, and like you don't know whether or not it's going to work, uh, but you just do it anyways. All right, so Chaggy's been thinking about this for a while. The thing is, he has to go. He's already mousing over the Warsong Commander because he knows he has to start yeah. the turn immediately. He's dead next turn regardless, so he just has to go for it. And this That's is right. where the instincts of Patron have to kick in. And it's one of the interesting parts about playing Patron is a lot of times oh, you have he to drew the other war he drew the other Frothing Berserker. That's uh, it's possibly going to be more damage. Um, I was actually thinking the Patron, I think the patron would that. be more damage because you could bounce them all in. Yeah, I mean, with this, I don't think you can get through all the taunts because the patrons were necessary in order to uh, deal with quite a few of these. Um, yeah, even the ooze is going to block a frothing. Chalky is like, oh, there's no way I can get through all these taunts. Yeah, he's not going to get... I think patron was a uh, better chance at hitting lethal. Um, I don't know whether or not he'd have it. I interesting <clears throat> picture to I, look at later. Yeah. Chalky's like, oh, stupid ooze. Well, he still needs to get through three taunts, really. If only I could hit the face, I could do 48 damage. Yeah, I think the patron would have allowed him to fight, fight on the board, because he would have been able to have 
four patrons, I think, because he wouldn't have been, or so he could have thrown those in to the extra taunts. Right. Well, Still, he would have had five total. Whirlwind effect was going off, so uh, with all the five health minions, I he would have to send two patrons apiece. Pretty sure he didn't have it either way, but uh, patron looked to be the one that had the higher chance. And oh, Sunstorm won three in a row. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so Chucky was on the um, giving end of the 3 0 in his first matchup, and now on the receiving end of the 3 0. So Silent Storm is going to be the first player from Group A to move on to the semifinals on Sunday. So uh, he guarantees himself $750, and now he only has to win two best of seven series to make it to the grand finals at PAX to face off against Trump, potentially. Trump said he's a little right. bit afraid of Silent Storm because uh, with TGT coming out, it's going to be crazy. I mean, um, I, I'm pretty sure because the first day of PAX is on August. It's on the Friday. So August 28th. Blizzard did say that TGT is going to be released. August, yes. In so. August. It's yeah. possible that it might be August 29th or 30th. Um, or 31st, because there are 31 days in August, but it's doubtful, so I'd imagine it's going to be. But that's going to shake things up, um, especially since it's the last tournament, premier tournament, that rewards World Championship points. And I know, Trump, you're uh, definitely in the race for World Championship points, as well as Silent Storm and Chalky here. So um, that's going to be a big tournament to try and grab a bunch of points right at the end. Yep. Well, Silent Storm managed to... Uh, I wonder if Silent Storm is going to be the player who didn't bring a warrior... Uh, I don't know what the other four players, which we're going to cast tomorrow, will mm -hmm. bring. But good for him. He manages to uh, take a 3-0 without a warrior. Yeah, so Chucky will move down to the elimination match. He's going to face off against the winner of our next match, which is going to be the loser's match between Impact and Privet. But guys, we are going to go to a quick commercial break before, into that, before we jump into that match. Two more matches to go left today. Don't go anywhere, guys. More Summer Circuit action continues right after this.